Look at this. <laughs> this is good. It's a drone brought crashing to the ground by an Australian eagle. Take wow. that. Oof. The eagle is said to have used its talons to punch the drone. The Oof. drone was left mangled on the floor, and we Ouch. hear that the eagle hovered overhead. Is the drone dead, was what the eagle was exactly. thinking. Don't right. mess with Aussie eagles. Yeah, right. Aussie right. eagles. Right. Right. I'd put the American eagle over the Aussie oh, yes, eagle absolutely. any day, baby. Uh, more on rogue <laughs> drones. I suppose a rogue eagle shortly. Yeah. Uh, Verizon <laughs> wants to make the internet a thousand times faster. You could download a high-def two-hour movie in eight seconds. Wow. Shayna Glanza, tech guru, is here. Mm -hmm. Is this for real? I mean... I don't know what downloading uh, in eight, I don't know what that's all about, but I would like a thousand times faster. Can <laughs> I get it soon? It, the key here is that they're just testing this technology right now in a lab and in a three mile stretch in Massachusetts. So unless you move to that three mile stretch in Massachusetts, it's gonna be a little while until you get the technology at your house. Is it revolutionary technology? Uh, could it be implemented relatively easily? If it works, will Verizon have it on my doorstep in what, a year or so? I and mean, what are we looking here? I certainly think that Verizon wants to push this to market as soon as they can because it is revolutionary. I mean, it's 10 times faster than Google Fiber, which has been seen to be the leader in the market right now in this case. But what they're doing is, is, is kind of ingenious. They're adding different color spectrums to their current fiber optic lines, and that new color spectrum is allowing them to deliver this thousand times faster speed for the internet. So wow. it will take a little while, but it benefits Verizon to get it into your hands as soon as they can. So they don't have to have a whole brand new fiber optic cable going, going around the country. They can utilize the one they've got and just make it faster. Is that accurate? That is what they're working on right now, and that's what mm. I believe, you know, what they're working on with these different colors in, in the fiber optic cables that currently exist. I'd want that, wouldn't you? <laughs> Yes. yes. Yes, very much so. <laughs> yes on that one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I want to talk to you, Shana, about drones. Uh, it's kind of a, a technology product, and you know all about this stuff. Lately, they've been running rogue, as I'm sure you know. Uh, the latest example is uh, they're flying around airports, getting dangerously close to commercial jetliners. I think you have, Shana, I think you've got an example, perhaps the, most, the, the example of the most dangerous drone situation around airports. Will you tell us about it? Yeah, there are really two that come to mind. One is from May of 2014, and it was a small U.S. Airways flight that was headed from Charlotte to Tallahassee. And the pilot saw the drone um, as they were about to land and actually thought that they had made a, had collided with it. Later proved not to be true. They landed OK, about 50 people uh, on that flight. Um, and But that was a really close call. And then more recently, July of this year, in uh, Warsaw, in Poland, Lufthansa's flight that was carrying about 122 people was coming from Munich. And they were within 300 feet of a drone able to, you know, so not you know, collide with that, but a very, very close call for those passengers as well. I mean, there are two threats here. An amateur loses control of the, of the, of the drone and it hits a commercial jetliner. I mean, that's an obvious threat. Or a maliciously intentioned person, a terrorist, has a go at one of a, of a jetliner with a drone. I mean, there's, there's two threats here, aren't there? And the, the, that threat level seems to be rising all the time. I'm just not sure what you can do about it. Any ideas? You know, and I think that I'd even add a third, which is just the uninformed drone user that doesn't sure. even know what they're doing. I mean, they just they get it up in the air and they're not sure, you know, where the where the different airplanes are flying in from. They don't have anything that gives them you know, any indication of that. So even though there are regulations, there are fines if you fly by an airport or if you fly by that wildfire last month in California, there are mm -hmm. fines as high as twenty five thousand dollars. You're right. There's not much that can be done. These people have not yet been identified in these incidents. Yeah, really. Wow. Shana Glenza, always good stuff. We appreciate you being with us. Thanks, Shana. Appreciate it. Okay. Thanks.